ante. on the university registrar to invite the VC to read the citation of the inaugural lecturer. You are welcome, sir. It is my privilege and honor to invite the acting vice chancellor to declare the 47 inaugural lecture open and also read the citation of the inaugural lecturer. Active Vice Chancellor, sir. Isiaka Adewale Emiola, the 47th inaugural record setting university, is a high academic, distinguished lecturer, and accomplished member of many of his students, mentor, sorry, of to many of his students, and a career driven achiever and practitioner with over 30 years working experience in both the private and public sectors of his chosen field of agriculture and agribusiness. Born in the city of Warriors, Ibadan, precisely Ojo, Akinyele local government area, Oyo State, to Alhaji Chief Busa Ria Miola Alamu, the immediate past Olojo of Ojo, and Mrs. Nusirat Emiola, both of blessed memory of Baba Yemi Compound, Oko Yosa, Abebi Ibadan. Isiaka Emiola attended HLA School, Ojo, and Ijai High School, Ijai Orile, for his primary and secondary education. Professor Emiola also attended short courses in the field of agriculture and obtained certificates in project initiation, execution, supervision, and monitoring of the department of departmental programs and activities for government supervisors and certificates in hazard analysis, critical Center Point, HACCP. Food Safety Initiative, Manitoba Agriculture, Food and Rural Initiatives, Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada, to mention a few. 
Professor Emiola joined the services of the Lado Capitola University of Technology, Ogomosho, as assistant lecturer in the year 2000 and rose through the ranks to a career height of a full professor in the year 2012. He is reputed to have been high achieving in every administrative office he occupied at departmental, faculty, and university levels, some of which are Pioneer Head, Department of Animal Nutrition and Biotechnology, Chairman, Curriculum Development Committee for the proposed Faculty of Animal Science, Lautec 2020 till date, Coordinator, Department, Departmental Procedure Committee, 2006 to 2010, Chairman, Budget and Fundraising Subcommittee, ASAM Conference, 2009, among other statutory committees. At the faculty level, Member Faculty Board of Examiners, Member Faculty Board of Studies, Member Finance Subcommittee 2010 to 2011, Chairman Faculty Staff Seminar Committee 2012 to 2013, Faculty Representative Postgraduate School Board 2016 to 2018, and Member Faculty Review Committee 2014 to date. Marlborough, United Kingdom. An astute researcher, Professor Adewale Emiola has won several research grant awards in and outside the shores of Nigeria, among which are Hope Agricultural Contribution Towards the Community Hall. He was Secretary, Governing Council, Ojo Youth Association, Adekola Legacy Club, Ibadan. Dynamic Social Club Ibadan, member of Oluyo Lake Club of Ogumosho. He is also a member of Achiever Club 88 Ibadan. He was a member of the Finance and General Purpose Committee of the Central Council of Ibadan Indigenous. Founding member, Nigeria Canada Congress, Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. Member, Nigerian in Diaspora Organization, NIDO, Manitoba. Chapter, Winnipeg, Canada. Social Secretary, Nigeria Association of Manitoba Incorporation, Winnipeg, Canada, 20, 2006 to 20, 2007. And President, Association of Nigerians in KwaZulu Natal, Peters Marburg, South Africa, 2005 to 2006. Professionally, Professor Isiaka Adewale Emiola is a registered animal scientist with the Nigerian Institute of Animal Sciences, NIAS. Member, Animal Science Association of Nigeria, ASAM. Member, Nigerian Poultry Science. Member, Nigerian Society of Animal Production, NSAP. Member, Agricultural Society of Nigeria, ASN. Member, Society for Underutilized Legumes. Member American Society of Animal Science, member Canadian Society of Animal Science, and member Canadian Nutrition Society, and also member World Poultry Science. <laughs> Professor Emiola is a consultant to many livestock farms, both within and outside of your state. He served as a consultant to the Ohio State Government sponsored project on identification of locations for the establishment of agro-industrial clusters in the state. He was invited by the Nigerian Institute of Animal Science, NIAS, as a technical expert for the development of animal biotechnology curriculum for the Postgraduate College of Animal Science, Kaduna. Professor Emiola is married to Mrs. Oluwatoyi Emiola and the marriage is blessed with godly children. So 
I would like to declare this inaugural lecture open. I have my son. The Pro Chancellor and Chairman of Governing Council of Ladoke Akintola University of Technology, the Vice Chancellor, members of Council, Registrar, Borsell, University Liberian, Provost of College of Medicine, Deans of Faculty of Agriculture and Sciences, Dean Postgraduate School, Deans of other faculties and of student affairs, members of the University Senate, heirs of department and units, your royal highnesses, my law, spiritual and temporal, members of the university community, distinguished guests, families and friends, gentlemen of the place, ladies and gentlemen. It is with great sense of gratitude to God that I stand before you to present the 47th inaugural lecture of Ladoke Akintola University of Technology, Ogbomashel, on behalf of the Faculty of Agricultural Sciences, I give all glory, honor, adoration to Almighty God, my Savior, my Creator, for His mercies upon my life. I would like to dedicate this lecture to God Almighty and my parents who did everything within their power and resources to see me through life. Alaji Busari Emiola and Nusira Emiola, both of blessed memory, and to the entire academic molders and builders of my life. It is not by my strength or my ability, but by the special grace of God, who has been so merciful and gracious to me. May his name alone be praised forever. Amen. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, this is the 11th inaugural lecture from the Faculty of Agricultural Sciences, and the second to the only one presented by Professor G.O. Farino, titled, You Are What You Eat. And the first, by a chair of animal, animal feed resources and fictors ecology from the Department of Animal Nutrition and Biotechnology. This idea of inaugural lecture in the university is for the scholar to give the description of his research work done in his area of socialization and its impact on the society at large. This lecture will offer me the opportunity to inform my colleagues, the university community, the general public of my contribution to scholarship, including current research and my future plans relating to feed resources and feed ecology. I thank the Active Vice Chancellor of the University, Professor Majid Olaide Liasu, for the opportunity to deliver this lecture. This occasion gives me a sense of fulfillment and completes the requirement of my scholarly at at attainment. I am immensely grateful, sir. My heart of gratitude to all of you gathered here today to witness this momentous event. Why animal science? Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, please permit me to recount my journey into the field of animal science in general and feed resources and feed ecology in particular. Animal science and indeed agriculture was never part of my profession for consideration, for consideration at early part of my life. My plan was to study law right from when I was in form three at TJI High School. During one of our long vacation, Late Professor J.T. Okedara of the de Department of Adult Education, University of Ibadan, visited my father. It was during this visit that he inquired about my future plan. Without missing word, I told him of my plan to be a lawyer. I got a nice, comfortable look from my father while the professor was encouraging me to face my study and read my books and was wishing me the very best of luck. My father responded to his inspirational speech by telling him that he will never use his money to train a professional lawyer. Besides, my father was of the view that a successful lawyer must, as a matter of policy, be a member of a court. My ego was immediately deflated, and I was thrown into career path wilderness. I lost interest in education completely, since my dream was shattered by my own father, the key financier of my education. 
Back then in school, I had a friend, Dayo, Dayo Akabi, now Professor Dayo Daniel. He was my good friend and he was very good in biology while I was an average student. I loved chemistry and this propelled me into the science class. I was in science class while trying to maintain the core social science subject in case my father reconsidered my preferred profession. It, it was in the course of my pursuit to be a good science student that the agricultural science teacher, a Ghanaian trained Nigerian, Mrs. Alabi, after my first term examination result, invited me to her office and informed me that with my performance that I would be a good agriculturist. There and then, I changed, my wanting, I changed from wanting to be a lawyer to be an agriculturist. I left secondary school with the notion of being an agriculturist and with law remaining in my subconscious mind. In 1981, I was admitted to School of Animal Health and Husbandry, more plantation in Ibadan, through the assistance of my uncle, Alaji Majaro, late Alaji Majaro. After completion of OND, I was employed by the Ministry of Agriculture and Natural Resources, Secretary at Ibadan, and was put to veterinary clinic, Makola, headed by one Mr. Abe, with over 50 HND orders and a graduate of animal science on his national youth service. The youth couple and I became instant friends and we took instruction from our senior colleagues in the office. Mr. Abe was later transferred to Elisha office and his office was locked up and was only open whenever there was need to take vaccines. Besides, only his office was well equipped while all other staff, including me, were kept in a common room. As a young man, I persuaded the most senior in the common room to take over Mr. Abe's office, but he refused. Two months after, after his departure, my copper friend came back to the office. I thought the purpose was to visit me and share some moment with me. I was wrong. He showed me his posting letter as the new head of poultry unit. I was devastated, not because my friend became the head of the department, but for those colleagues who are 50, 20 years HND oldest, now working under him, that was my last day in that office. At this point, I was living with my uncle, the head of our family, Elijah Lassisi Adepoju, the biological father of Professor Gava Adepoju of the Department of Electrical and Electronics. One of our neighbor, Mr. Leke Efuakbe, a senior manager with UBA, who adopted me and my cousins, Taiwan Kainde Lassisi, as brothers, as his brothers. Through this opportunity, we met a number of his friends. One of them is Dr. Amos Adamo and Dr. Timile Kayode Smith. Both were studying for their PhD at the University of Ibadan. Brought in me, took interest in me. We traveled together on field trip on a research uh, project. During this period, I discussed my career frustration with him. He took interest and followed up on my progress. I told him of my intention to study law again. That, that I chose University of Jaws. He did not argue with me, but requested to this reform. He struck out law, chose agriculture, gave me the freedom to pick any of the options in agriculture, any of the options in agriculture. He also canceled University of Jaws and suggested either University of Ibadan or University of Ife. I was more troubled by this action. But I could not do anything because of my respect for him. He gave me transport fare for my first and second visit to the University of Ife to check jam result. He was the happiest man when I was admitted to study animal science at the then University of Ife. The choice of feed resources and feed toxicology. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, in the course of my study, from diploma to degree, the most recurrent problem in livestock production remained the cost of feed and availability of feedstuff all year round. Other areas, such as genetics and breeding, animal product, reproductive physiology, also depend largely on availability of feed in the right combination to supply the nutrient trees of the various classes of animal. The fact that feed alone constitutes 65 to 70 percent of the total cost of production in poultry and swine inspired me to find a way of reducing the feed cost, thus improve profitability without compromising animal performance. This triggered my interest in monogastric animal nutrition, 
with my house in feed resources and feed toxicology. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, when I was considering the title of this lecture, it took me little effort before certainly for the theme, sustainable livestock production and food, food security, fees and feedstuffs to the rescue. I am convinced from my research findings that the bedrock of sustainable livestock production and food security lies in the provision of adequate feed and feedstuff in the right proportion all year round. This central goal of my research activity in animal nutrition in the last 25, 21 years is predicated on one goal, to, re to reduce anti-nutrient in feed and feedstuff, thereby improving in nutrient utilization and increase animal performance. My research into alternative feed resources and agro-industrial byproducts to replace high-cost conventional beef feedstuff led to the evaluation of many potential plant protein and energy sources capable of boosting livestock production and hence food security. My quest to help reduce the cost of production through alternative mail led me to understanding of biochemistry and metabolism involved in feed utilization. But chemistry studied the biology secret of life. It studied the structure and interaction of biological macro molecules, including protein, nucleic acid, lipids, carbohydrates present in the body. Metabolism itself is the biochemistry that governs all the flows of energy as a set of life sustaining chemical reactions. This encompasses three things. One, the conversion of feed to energy to run cellular processes. Two, the conversion of feed to building block for protein, lipids, nucleic acid, and some carbohydrates. And three, the elimination of metabolic waste. This enzyme catalyzed reaction allow organisms to grow and, and reproduce, maintain their structure, and respond to their environment, including digestion and the transport of substances inter and intra cells. Split at all 2018. The chemical reaction of metabolism are organized in metabolic pathways in which one chemical is transformed through a series of steps into another chemical. Each step being facilitated by a specific enzymes. Enzymes are crucial to metabolism because they allow organisms to drive desirable reactions that require energy that will not occur by themselves by coupling them to spontaneous reaction that release energies. Enzymes act as catalysts. They allow a reaction to proceed more, rapi proceed more rapidly and they allow the regulation of the rate of a metabolic reaction. For example, in the response to changes in cell's environment or the signal from other cells. The metabolic system of a particular organism determines which substance it will find nutritious or poisonous. Based on my background as an animal nutritionist and feed toxicologist, my discussion in this inaugural lecture will dwell more on the nutritional perspective and its impacts and opportunities. This inaugural lecture will present le relevant literature on the subject of livestock development in Nigeria, highlighting the concept linking them. Relevance of livestock production. Livestock production has become an integral part of human society at both local and global economy. Domestic livestock contribute to food nutrition by providing sources of egg, meat, milk, and raw material. Livestock furnishes high quality protein and energy by converting mainly plant material, some of which humans cannot handle, to high biological food material. I mean, a 1991, a rural, a 2013 and 14. In fact, in an efficient and prosperous, in an efficient and prosperous animal agriculture, historically has been a mark of strong, well-developed nation. The Gago et al. 2001, a narrow 2019. This is because agriculture permits a nation to store large quantities of grain to be utilized to raise animal for human consumption during natural calamities. During natural calamities. Recent estimates indicate that Nigerian national aid comprises of 18.4 million cattle, 43.4 million sheep, 76 million goats, 4.5 million pigs, 180 million poultry. The majority of animal are raised in its an extensive production system comprising of small holders and nomadic elders. The Nigerian livestock industry 
plays an important role in the national food security, providing animal protein for a growing population of over 180 million people, employment, and raw material for agro-industrial development. Poor nutrition is one of the major production constraints in small older systems, particularly in Africa. Research has been carried out to improve the quality and availability of feed resources for livestock. Major grain that serve as food for man are as well conventional animal feed ingredients. Intensive life for production, production requires that feeds are formulated to meet their nutritional requirements. Examples of such energy feedstuffs such are uh, maize and sorghum, while protein Free stop includes soybean and grant nut. The competition between man and his livestock has been aggravated by the worsening crisis of climate change, poor production, farmer earthman clashes, pests and diseases, and growing human population. The production of alternative feeds and feed stock for livestock in the more intensive mix system is the key to improve livestock production and food security. The type of feed stock that these animals are able to utilize are dependent on the digestive system that they possess. Figure one and two, which is the digestive system of pigs and poultry, which are subject of my research in over 21 years. Anti-nutritional factor in plant feedstuffs. Antinutrients are primarily associated with compounds or substances of natural or synthetic origin, which interfere with absorption of nutrients and act to reduce nutrient intake, digestion, utilization, and may produce other adverse effects. Antinutrients are frequently related to plant feedstuffs, either raw or processed. In this regard, biochemical effects of the antinutritional factor are an object of my research of my research interest, most of the secondary metabolite so acting as an antinutrient elicit very harmful biological responses, while some of them are widely applied in nutrition and as pharmaco pharmacologically active agent. Okay, and CDU 1989 and Shred 2008. Plant, plant, plant made up 82 to 98 compounded feed offered to livestock, suggesting that all feeds and feedstuff contain one or more antinutrients. Some of these antinutrients are protease inhibitor, immaglutinin, tannin, phytate, chlorogen, raffinose, oligosaccharide, saponin, cyanogenic glycoside, and non-protein nitrogen. I will classify these antinutrients into two classes. The eat labile antinutrients, which are the protease inhibitor and immaglutinin, and the other classes, the tannin, the oxalate, the phytates, are the each stable. In this, in my, in my research, I have developed several processing methods to reduce the antinutrient in feedstuff so that the nutritive value will be improved and the animal performance, animal will be, animal performance will be enhanced. Methods of processing methods that we have developed over time include soaking, Tama treatment, most especially for the tricin inhibitor and imaglutinin that are heat labor. Immediately it is applied either in aqueous form or dry eating. It is removed totally. However, the tannins or zalates, that is the group that are heat stable, are resistant to eat. So other processing methods were advocated and used during in the course of my research. Soaking, fermentation, sprouting, and radiation, gamma radiation. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, ladies and gentlemen, I want to move quickly to my contribution to scholarship since, is, since this is the bedrock of my research in over 21 years in academics. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, my research interest is in ingredient evaluation, feed toxicology and processing, application of biotechnology in animal nutrition. The vision is to create decision model that optimizes feed processing following ingredient evaluation. The end goal is to ensure a predictable performance of livestock species within each feed ingredient. A range exists in quality characteristics that must be validated in animal model, but should be measured for a large number of samples using laboratory-based techniques. The range in, quality, in quantity is usually related to a change in factors such as fiber, 
and other antinutritional factors that negatively influence nutrient digestibility or rate of digestion. Feed processing, including grinding, pelleting, expansion, extrusion, application of enzyme technology can be used to reduce the negative impact of this factor, thereby improve digestibility characteristics and overall performance of animal, most especially poultry and swine. In this area, I have published over 108 journal articles in peer-reviewed in journals and peer-reviewed conference proceedings from my research, either conducted as so, so with, or with my student, or collaborator both within and outside Nigeria. The bulk of my publication are industry-based research that invest investigated, elucidated, and resolved problems within the complex system of feed resources and utilization in livestock production. The sole aim of my research work was to use scientific principle to solve problems associated with livestock production and hence make protein available for human consumption. My contribution can be classified under the following headings. Nutrient characterization of underexploited plant protein, effect of toxic and anti-nutritional factors in feed and feedstuff for animals, effect of different processing methods on the concentration of anti-nutritional factors in feedstuffs, effect of residual anti-nutritional factor on the nutritive value of legumes on animal performance, use of agro-industrial byproduct as livestock feeds, application of enzyme technology in monogastric nutrition, and alternative to and beads for least feed cost formulation. Mr. Fire Chancellor, sir. Feed is very important to meeting the food security need of the populace through sustainable livestock production. In order to achieve this, the cost of feed has to be reduced through the use of sustainable strategies. My research efforts focus on the following thematic areas. One, nutrient characterization of some underexploited plant protein. The first step in animal nutrition research, and most especially in feed resources, is to conduct chemical characteri characterization of materials. This provides information on the nutrient content inherent in the ma material that could be of benefit to livestock. Over the years, extensive breeding studies in Nigeria have resulted in the availability of improved variety of seed that are resistant to pests and diseases with desirable qualities such as high yield index, pest and disease resistance, and early maturity. This effort has led to the identification of some underexploited plant protein feedstuff that, that is of high nutritional potential that could be incorporated into livestock seeds. Some of the improved seeds being used in feedstuff in compounding animal feed without database about their chemical composition and nutritional value, breeding for improved variety would not, be, would not have been possible. My research effort characterized several varieties of Mokuna, that's a Miotla 2003, 2004, 2006, African Yam Beans, Tenophthalis, Tenokapa, a Miotla 2004, 2011, Abioya and a Miotla 2017, 2018, Kidney Beans, Fasoli for a Miotla 2004, a Miotla Etor 2006, 2007, Fever Bean, Emiola and House 2011, Bambara Grand North Akeji Etor 2003, 2008, Jack Bing Califalia Enciformis Akeji Etor 2013, Pigeon P, Abioye and Emiola 2017, to mention a few. This publication serves as a database and provides information on the level of nutrient and the toxic principle inherent in the plant material and their nutritional benefit as food for man and feedstock for livestock. Our results have been used by plant breeder in breeding improvement program to produce seed varieties that improve nutrient composition and reduce anti-nutritional factors. Effect of toxic anti-nutritional factor in feeds and feedstuffs in monogastric animal. The, practice, the presence of bioactive substances in plant protein feedstuff with high nutritional potential call for investigation into this research. The aim was to determine the effect of intake 
of toxic and antinutritional effect in feast off on the performance, not utilization, and histology of organ under exploited plant protein, contain variety of constituents that interferes with digestion and absorption of nutrients, hence animal performance. The major antinutrients found in plant-based phase are the imaglutinin protease inhibitors and gene glycoset as listed before. These antinutrients are the source of concern exclusively of untreated plant feed materials. Papova 2019. This reduces the feed nutritional quality. Oxalate, for instance, prevents calcium from being absorbed in the body by binding with, with it. Rock, raw mucuna, kidney bean, faber bean, jatrova calcus, African yam bean, and soybean usually contain oxalate. Emiola 2003. 2007, 2011, or 2015, when consuming ex excessive tannins, which are associated with legume grains, enzymes responsible for protein absorption may be inactivated. Or 2018, phytate are present in grains, nuts, and seeds. This contains lectins. Phytate consumption may lead to lower mineral absorption. Effect of different processing methods on the concentration of antinutritional factor. The potential of, of underutilized legume as a, very, as a veritable source of protein in life of feed have been established. I mean, I thought 2004, 5, 2006. Studies from my laboratory observed reduced nutrient utilization, reduced weight gain, accompanied by enlargement of pancreas, hyperplasia of hepatic cell, and ulceration of intestinal lining. Effort at reducing the toxic effect led to the investigation of some processing techniques, such as soaking, Emiola 2004, 2006, Akaji 2008, decortication, Emiola 2003, 2004, 2007, toasting, Emiola 2006, 7, or 2018, equals heat treatment, Emiola 2004, 16, 2007, and soaking prior to cooking. Finding from these efforts has led to significant significant increase in the inclusion level of underexploited legume seed in the diet of monogastric animals animals most of the feed form feed of the most of the feed stuff in raw forms are unappealing and rejected by animals due to offensive odor and bitter taste a common approach is to remove the, the antinutrient is to treat product thermally use methods such as extrusion not to cleafing hydro techniques enzymatic and harvest treatment as as reported by Miola 2003, 6, 18, 2014, or JDN and ABU 2018. Therefore, nutritional value of feed strongly depends on their nutritional and anti-nutritional composition. The processing method developed in these studies have been adopted by many livestock farms for routine screening and processing of feedstuff before incorporation into animal feeds. Figure 7, 8, 9, 10 shows our result of the result of our various experiments using different processing methods. Nutritional investigation of residual anti-nutritional factor in processed feedstuff. Result from my laboratory have established that processing reduces anti-nutritional factor in feed, improve nutrient utilization, and consequently improve animal performance. My PhD thesis focused on the effect of anti Residual anti-nutritional factors intake in processed legume seeds on the performance biochemistry, reproductive parameter of electric broilers and cockerel. I explored the use of mukuna seeds, a lesser known legume, Emiola et 2003, with 29.38% crude protein as a component of poultry feed. I investigated the inclusion of cooked, decorticated, and toasted bukuna utilities in the feed of broilers at the rate of 200 grams per kilogram of feed. Feed intake, body weight gain, and feed conversion were depressed in balls fed decorticated bukuna seed meal. Apparent digestibility of crude protein ether extract, cool fiber, and hash were also affected by the processing method employed. It was concluded that cooled mukuna seed meal could be incorporated into broiler diet at 200 grams per kilogram of diet while decortication was an ineffective processing method. In another experiment, and let me allow it 2004, we postulated that to a two-way processing method, we reduce each stable antinutritional anti factor and destroy the eat labor once, does improve animal performance. It was established from the study that cook, crack, 
decorticated cook mukuna says could be incorporated up to 25% without any adverse effect on the performance of broiler chicken. A mere light 2007 investigated the influence of processing of mukuna prurens by utilities, kidney beans facilities for garrison on performance, nutrient utilization, and organ weight of broiler chicken. These legumes were processed by three different methods fixed equals eating, toasting, and the hauling. Dry eating most reduce the anti-nutritional factors. Processed mukuna and kidney bean meal was used to replace 50% protein supplied by soybean in the control diet. It was concluded from this study that both equals eating and dry eating improved average daily gain and feed conversion ratio. Their were pancreatic enlargement in both fed the whole meat while weight of the liver were reduced in the same group of boss. The structural alteration were attributed to high concentration of red residual tricin inhibitor in the dehol meals. It was concluded that equus eating, equus eating kidney bean and mukuna beans can be incorporated to replace 50% crude protein, crude protein supplied by soybean meal in the diet of broilers. Similarly, Emil Lai thought 2007 Observe that the relative weight of pancreas was increased as a result of arsenal hypertrophy when raw and processed kidney blade feed, kidney beans, was fed to broiler chicken. The kidney had severe congestion of glomeruli and distension of capillary vessel with numerous thrombi in both fed soaked and decorticated kidney veins. The weight of the liver was reduced in both fed raw and the whole meals. It was characterized by marked coagulative necrosis and degeneration of hepatocytes. The structural alteration was attributed to high concentration of residual, uh, residual anti-nutritional factor in the process. That is table, uh, that can be found in table three. Emiolai and horse investigated whether faber bean could successfully be used in feed for winner pigs in a period of 10 to 25 kilograms in comparison to full fat soya. Diluting full fat soya with the whole faber bean meal had no effect on growth rate, feed intake, and feed conversion efficiency and time to attain final weight. When given a choice between two basic diets, no preference was shown for either the feed. It was concluded that feed for winner pigs may contain as much as 300 grams per kilogram of feed without any adverse effect on performance as long as the quality of favor being used in the same, is the same as the one used in this trial. I also explored the use of African yam beans in 2011. The result revealed that 50% of Protein can be replaced using cooked African yam bean at the expense of soybean meal. At the use of agro-industrial byproduct in monogastric nutrition. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, agro-industrial byproducts are abundant all over the world and are known to be rich in nutrients that can support microbial growth on one hand or can be used to produce some important metabolites on the other hand, thereby leading to microbial upgrading of the fermented substrates. Alternative feedstuff can be classified as either direct from crop production in 2011, result from crop fractionalization, co-product, or industrial waste. In this area, we have investigated the utilization of several agro-industrial waste material as feedstuff for livestock. For instance, maize, a major conventional energy ingredient, has been replaced with sorghum, or jedi and emiola 2008, biscuit dough, or jedi rye, 2020, tester meal, or ladunjoye, bura dry grains, bakari, and emiola 2019, aroye, and emiola 2019, with the silla dry grain with solubles, Emiola 2009, breadfruit, Ola Dunjo Yeto 2004 and 2006. However, anti nutrient inherent in some of these feedstuffs pose a challenge. I have used biodegraded rice oats, cassava distiller waste meal, brewer spent grains, palm kernel meal as energy feedstuff, and more especially fiber sources in monogastric diet. The chemical composition of the alternative feedstuff included the energy content crude protein, ether extract, and ash content, dry matter, vitamins, and minerals, among others, influences it uses as components of animal feeds. The use of ad feed additive. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, phosphorus is one of the most expensive nutrients in poultry and swine, feed, in swine diet, 
and their abundance in excreta and manure is of growing environmental concern because the accumulation in soil and water is detrimental to aquatic ecosystem and human and increase in the efficiency of phosphorus utilization in poultry and swine will offer both economic and environmental benefit. One of the current approaches to mitigate against nutrient excretion in livestock is through improved feeding procedure and by using feed additives such, such as microbial phytis. In 2005, the government of Manitoba province in Canada placed moratorium on the establishment and further expansion on the existing swine industry because of leaching of nutrient into water bodies, resulting in growth of algae in Lake Winnipeg, which poses health hazard to human. This coincides with the period of my postdoctoral fellowship at the, at the Department of Animal Science, University of Manitoba. Nutritional strategy was employed to address this situation. I worked together with other scientists, Professor Don Fountain, Professor Wale Akiremi of the Department of Soil Science, University of Manitoba, and my host, Professor Martin Yachoti of the Department of Animal Science, over a period of three years, with funding from Danisco Animal Nutrition to find Danisco Animal Nutrition, Manitoba, Manitoba Livestock Manure Management Initiative, Manitoba, Manitoba Pork Council to find a lasting solution to the problem of eutroph eutrophication. Figure 11 shows the eutrophication, that is, the growth of algae in water bodies. During summer, it is expedient for, for Canadians to go to lake to swim so as to uh, run away from high temperature. But when there is growth of algae, it becomes dangerous. Feed additive become necessary in livestock production. As they enhance nutrient utilization and productivity, I explore the use of microbial phytic supplementation in diet of growing pigs. In Miller 2009, nutrient utilization, manure pea excretion in growing pig, fed corn, barley, soybean-based diet supplemented with microbial phytic showed that added phytic at 1,000 and 4,000 units per, per kilogram increased Phosphorus retention by 14.3% and 15.6 percentage unit respectively, compared with the positive control. Urinary phosphorus excretion was higher in the group fed the positive control diet compared with those that, that received negative control and double negative control. The result of this study shows that complete removal of inorganic phosphorus from the diet of Pigs, coupled with phytase supplementation, improve digestibility and retention of phosphorus and nitrogen, thus reducing manure phosphorus excretion without any negative effect on peak performance. The figure 12 shows the performance characteristics of growing pig fed the diet and the digestibility of phosphorus, digestibility of nitrogen and calcium. Response of monogastric animals such as poultry and swine to diet controlling non-starch polysaccharides is limited due to low activity of fiber degrading enzyme in the gastrointestinal tract. Similar at all, 2014, non-starch polysaccharides are complex carbohydrates with the sophisticated cell walls other than starches found in food. They form the major part of dietary fiber and can be measured more precisely than the total dietary fiber. Example include cellulose, pectin, glucans, arabinans, ar arabinogalactans, galactans, manans, and galactomanans. non star polysaccharides, polysaccharides, being a carbohydrate, are potential energy source and are indigestible by monogastric animal. The fibrinous can result in reduced nutrient digestibility, increased feed conversion ratio, and ultimately decrease in animal performance. When 2001, Noblet and the Gulf, 2001. Although this is determined by the fiber property, linked by 2014. Numerous researches have been conducted to develop various means of Various means of increasing nutritional content of fibrous feed material to, redu to reduce or eliminate the constraint of utilizing them in monogastric diet. In Miola 2009, investigators supplemented with the cellular dry grains with soluble, with diet weight, multi carbohydrates enzyme blend on growth performance and nutrient digestibility in growing furnishing feed. The result shows that multi-enzyme supplementation at 30% with the cellular dry grain improved growth performance, apparent total tract digestibility of dry matter, gross energy, crude, uh, crude fiber, and 
in growing pigs an apparent ileal digestibility of nutrient in finishing pigs. Figure 17, 18, 19, and 20 shows the result of that study. The use of least feed alternative to and B to, to least feed cost formulation. Least cost formulation and protein maximization have always been the target and compelling task confronting feed nutritionists and livestock producers globally. Meeting the demand of the increasing population in the face of scarce feedstock, hiking price of available ones, and the consciousness of environmental pollution is of utmost concern to researchers, especially developing nations. According to Miguel, 2009, it is becoming increasingly important to find a new way to stay competitive in the industry and decrease the cost of production as much as possible while producing high quality products for consumers. Synthetic amino acid acids have prompted the possibility of increasing level of amino acid and reducing the crude protein in diets of poultry. However, the lowest level in which crude protein can be reduced with amino acid supplementation in broiler diet without reducing performance is still unknown. An additional research on the subject could use significant greater cost saving. Conclusion and recommendation. Mr. Acting Vice Chancellor, sir. Available data on livestock production in Nigeria clearly indicate that we are far from biological potential of efficient production and supply of protein of animal origin. This, necess this necess necessity, uh, there is necessity of increasing feed raw material base through exploration of underutilized plant protein and agro-industrial byproduct for efficient livestock production. become very evident because of the demand for animal flesh and product continue to soar. Since animal production is mostly dependent on availability of feed and feedstuff, which ensures high multiplication of animal species, the nutritional hazard that the livestock are exposed to, to through an underestimation of the adverse anti nutrient on the performance of livestock, however, are one of the greatest setbacks to achieving this lofty objective. This lecture has shown us the importance of fees and feedstuff as the bedrock of sustainable livestock production and food security. I have no I have also tried to detail the inherent anti-nutritional factors and the processing method required to reduce the deleterious effect of the toxic principle in ingredient used as feedstuff in animal. If today we are what we eat, as presented by Professor G. O. Farino, and considering the fact that animal product is directly related to animal feeding, it does mean that feed and feedstuff are critical component of the food chain that has direct impact on animal welfare, food safety, and public health. This can be exploited as a tool to the much needed change to bring to bring about sustainable livestock development. This is the hallmark of my research activity in the last 21 years. As an animal nutritionist, in pursuit of this, I have trained several students and also mentored junior colleagues in several universities, as well as rendered consultancy services to livestock farmers in this field. Arising from my experience, I'd like to make the following recommendation. Although animal agriculture is, is, is strategic to alleviating the suffering of the poor and guaranteeing food security. In the supply